just fantastic, really. Um, you know, we've created history and we finished fifth at the Rio 2016 Paralympics and then we lost our funding and then we had to um, just train differently, you know, do crowdfunding and then I've had to do sponsorship ship searching and working in schools just to fund my sport, basically. And, and then obviously the COVID year hit <laughs> and yeah, it's just all those little adversities that we went through and all those you know, little hardships and all the sacrifices we all made uh, as a team and you know unfortunately we lost a few players and yeah we just had to just regroup and just sort of work together and work with what we had and work differently and work harder work smarter and yeah it all paid off and we became the first ever European team to break into the top three at the Paralympics in wheelchair rugby of course but yeah just uh, just you know, knowing that you're going to be a part of history now mm. um, is just that's something extra special. Um, I'd say like just being resilient, really. Um, you know, we we were we've been the Neely team for ever since I've been in the team, basically. Oh well, in Great Britain, wheelchair rugby's like 25 year history or 24 year history in the Paralympics, like. We've always been fourth, fifth, fourth, 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 and missing out on these semi-finals and things like that. So, yeah, you know, to come through, to go into that environment and completely change it uh, as a team, not just me, obviously. <laughs> I'm not going to take all the credit. Um, but, you know, just to be part of something, you know, just to change the culture, uh, part, of the, part of the team and just buying into it and bringing my own knowledge, bringing, you know, uh, everybody's stories together and just creating that togetherness. And we just, um, yeah, those qualities, being yourself, you know, hard work, resilience, you know, and then all the other qualities that an athlete should have really, uh, commitment, you know, to your nutrition, to your training, to and the sacrifice as well. And just having belief in yourself, even though people always doubt you, uh, you know, all the negative comments that you receive in the media and uh, people not believing in you in you, and uh, coming back to the family was the worst bit. He's like, like, what's happening? Why, why, we, why have you guys done it again? It's just having that, that resilience to just, um, you know, take all those things on the chin and just keep believing, keep working and yeah, and then it finally paid off. Um, for young people, just it's important to see, you know, um, you know, we, we tried to get away from this inspirational tag Paralympics as we want to be recognised as as like proper athletes, and I think it's getting to a stage where um, where we're being recognised and it's getting more and more coverage. So, but it, it is important to show that people that like, no matter what you've got, like you can achieve things. So if somebody takes inspiration uh, from that, you know, if I can change somebody's life uh, for the better, and you know, it, it could just mean like, you know, they've not got the confidence and they're fully able-bodied in doing something. So if they see, you know, a, a, a Paralympic athlete, you know, with with disabilities and, uh, you know, overcoming their their struggles, their adversity, and, you know, maybe they can think we can, we can do the same thing. And, you know, um, you know, I look at a person like sometimes I, I look at other other Paralympians and what they go through and you know just the other day it was like somebody saying to me um, like it hurts when I eat mm. like can you imagine mm. like hurts when you eat we love eating don't we <laughs> and I'm thinking even though I've got disability I'm quite lucky with not lucky but I'm quite uh, blessed mm. with the disability I've got like I couldn't imagine like what that what it's like for that person and i even said to him like it must you must dread feeling hungry if it hurts to eat and they go yeah uh, but uh, it just happens uh, so um you know I, i'm blessed to be even though i've got disability you might not look at it that way but i'm blessed with what i've got and what i can do and you know i'm just blessed to be eating and it doesn't hurt so um you know so seeing things like that um but yeah it, it's not just for young people really uh, you know i'm you know, me, me growing up in, and sorry, I keep going back to my, my Asian roots, and um, I want to be, like, now I've got the gold medal, you know, I want to be uh, a champion of, 
showing people of like Asian culture with the disabilities and they get told and you know it, some of the if I told you some of the stories I've heard you know uh, people being ashamed of their disabled children you know keeping them upstairs or keeping them away and not giving them the opportunities if I can be a beacon of hope and uh, to show the parents and the young disabled person um, that you know you can come through the system you can achieve with what you with what you've got and you know you should be ashamed of who you are and people should should be embracing it and you know there are qualities in a disabled person that you just need to bring out and give give opportunities to so the i think the paralympic movement is really strong but i think we do need to uh, go away from every disabled person uh, could be a paralympian mm -hmm. uh, it, it's about inspiring people to just do whatever whatever they've got their interest in you know not every disabled person will will have the capability to be a paralympian but they'll have capability to be a businessman uh, or just get a nine to five job you know you gotta give that sort of inspiration to to somebody just you know i found it hard to get to get a job uh, so basically uh, i graduated in 2010 and then I found it really, really hard to just find a job, um, and I had to I had to get a job that I didn't really want, but it was a job. Um, so, you know, and you know, once I was in the environment, uh, they helped me, you know, get a desk, a suitable desk, and they already had a lift and easy access getting into the building. But some of the in, some of the jobs I was uh, applying for, uh, saying, "Oh, we got a lift, but there's steps to get into the building." I'm like, how does that work? Um, so, <laughs> so I'm like, I can't come to the interview. Um, he goes, okay, we'll help you in. But I'm like, there's no point. Because mm -hmm. if even if I do get the job, it's just going to be a struggle for me to get into the building. So uh, I go, thank you, but no, thank you. So, um, you know, so it's just having that, that dialogue with, um, you know, you know, looking to make things easy for disabled people, making sure your building's accessible and you've got... Um, you know, lifts, you've got accessible toilets and, you know, just, just making the environment easy and making people comfortable with disabilities, uh, having a disability in, in, in your employment workforce. So just, just working with disabled people and, um, you know, that can have, bring extra diversity and extra value to your, to your organisation.